Second Cup, sponsored by Public Espresso and Coffee. Good morning. Glad you're with us on this Monday, 8 o'clock. Happy uh, beginning of the work week. Happy back to work for some of us. Glad to be back together with you. Yeah, we were gone you. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Had uh, Friday, Thursday and Friday off. You had all last week off. So uh, thank you for dealing with all these changes and bearing with us as we enjoy some time off. They were happy to have a break for you. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, so you were in Arizona uh, in oh, Tucson with um, our friend Ryan. Yeah, I went to visit one of my friends. Um, I've never been to Arizona before. Interesting. Desert. Desert. Mm -hmm. um, like sand instead of grass, right? Huge cigar cactuses. Oh, so I said to Ed. Drop in those names. Cacti, if you will. <laughs> so I say to Ed in the newsroom, I was like, I learned a lot about cacti in Arizona. Do you want to hear? And he's just like, and I was like, well, I'll just tell you anyway. <laughs> So it's those huge cacti, right? With the that look like if you think of a cactus, that's what. Well, that tell one is. everyone about um, how they grow because I thought that Let was. Let me really tell you guys about the cacti. So first off, the saguaro cactus grows very saguaro. saguaro. <laughs> Am I saying saguaro? Saguaro. Oh, I don't know if Ryan was saying the G silent. Saguaro. Saguaro. Maybe he was. Maybe I'm saying it wrong and I'm just saying it the way he spelled. <laughs> well, okay. So they grow a quarter of an inch every year. I learned this at the Botanical Garden. So I put up a picture on my Facebook of how tall this cat. I mean, this thing has to be hundreds of years old, right? Yeah, when you think about it. Um, birds make their little nests inside. They have like, they'll you'll see holes in that. In the cactus? Yes. Do they get wet? I don't know. They go. I I didn't poke my face in, but they make the little holes and they'll they'll like go inside like woodpeckers or maybe they're not quite nesting, but they're like getting in there. That's yeah, that's what they look like. Um, and then the botanical garden said, as tall as a cactus is, the roots are they're not deep or they're not deep. They're shallow, but they'll extend as far out as the cactus is. Wow! So they can collect the most rainwater, the most surface area to get the rainwater. Okay, right? so how tall was that one cactus? I mean, I put up a picture on my Facebook page. It is probably. Let me think. I don't know how how tall. Like, oh, I said a hundred. Oh, how old it is? Yeah. You're asking. Over a hundred, I would say. I would say it's probably like almost double my height, right? Yeah, it was big. It was really tall. So like twelve feet tall. <laughs> double my height. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know, ten nice. feet tall, something like that. I put up a picture. You can check it out. Uh, glad to have everyone here with us. My computer, of course, is just restarting right now because I have deferred. I told too you many not, times. Didn't I tell you not to do this? So yeah. this happened to me this morning. There it is. Yeah. So that's, I would say it's about double my height, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a big, big, I just like how its arm is like right over your head. Like so they were also saying this was at the Botanical Gardens and it also kind of said there's not, they haven't really discovered if there's rhyme or reason to like see all the arms that they have. Yeah. See how the one behind me has none? Yeah. And maybe that's a different, there were so many different kinds. We learned a lot. My husband was just on the lookout for rattlesnakes the whole time, which my friend assured him they are like quiet. Are they this until they attack? Because it was colder. <laughs> no, I mean, like, because it was colder. So they were like tucked away. They yeah. were coming out. But Paul was still like, I don't blame him. Doesn't like snakes. I don't blame him. Yeah. Uh, so I was in New York uh, Thursday and Friday for the Columbia DuPont Awards. And uh, it was a tremendous honor to be there. Who was in the room? Ginger Z, David Muir. Um, a whole bunch of other people, too. I uh, got to see some friends. Andy Parati was there. A lot of you might remember him. He used to work back in the day here at Channel 2. Um, but a great guy. A little bit rude of you to take Russ and not me. Sorry. Seeing as how. <laughs> He's my husband. <laughs> no, no. Seeing as how David Muir, I don't oh. care about Russ. Seeing as how David Muir was there. I know. You well, know how I it's so him. funny because I walked up to him. Sean, of course. Sean Mickey. Little Sean Mickey. Uh -huh. Rushes the stage. Uh -huh. Um, exactly, Lauren. The Thank first you, thing Lauren. I said to Russell was that, oh no, Katie's missing David. Thank you. So he rushes the stage to get a picture with David. And I'm like, oh. rushes the stage. Yeah, literally. He rushed the stage. Sean Mickey, so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm waiting and waiting to take a picture with David. And I get the picture. And I just go, I look around at everyone who's in the group. You know, I it was like, it. it was our news director, our general manager, Leanne, um, Sean, Jeff, yeah. me, Russ. I, I just looked at everyone. I go, Katie is going to die. <laughs> I can't even. So, but it was great. It was such an, it was a high honor. Um, but we went to an amazing restaurant afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, I love New York. 
there's no place like home. Uh -huh. And has first... anyone seen the movie The Menu? <laughs> has anyone seen this? So we did watch it while I was on vacation. That's when we watched it. So it was I, just like that. And I told Ed Boy, I when he sent me the picture of the restaurant, I was like, I don't want to I don't want to ruin the movie for you guys, but if you've seen it, I was like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Barbara. Appreciate you. Yeah, it was a huge honor for the I-Team. Um, it was for our story. This is, by the way, the highest honor in broadcast journalism. So it was for our story about uh, New York State troopers and um, their, dis their uh, discipline, rather, mm -hmm. uh, and accountability. So we'll put a link to the comment in the comments to that story. It was really something to be honored in the same room and in, like within the same breath too as these international journalists who covered afghanistan and have covered ukraine i mean it was really unbelievable uh peter wants to know what restaurant you went to okay it's it's called per se, per se. it is but it's literally called that <laughs> yeah literally it's a thomas keller it's a restaurant, restaurant per se <laughs> yeah and it's if any of you know french laundry it's the sister to french laundry mm. and you know, it's a little bougie. It's more than a little bougie. But you said it was totally worth it. It was totally worth so every fun. single dime. The experience was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Ginger, yeah. exactly. Ginger! Ginger gave me a hug. And I said to him, because it was late. It was like, it was probably about, I don't know, 7.15 or so by the time I saw her. And I was like, oh, I need to go talk to Ginger. And um, I said to her, I'm like, aren't you exhausted? She goes, yeah, but I did something really smart. I went to bed super early the night before. Knowing that she had a big long exactly. day. Exactly. God bless her. Plus right? she's got two kids. That's a lot. Uh, speaking of long days, how about going to the Super Bowl? That's a long day. <laughs> Especially what do you guys think? Fan. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I guess that's what, that's all we can ask right now. My husband was really disappointed that the Lions weren't in it. I know. It's like the Super Bowl you wanted yeah, versus the yeah. Super Bowl you got. <laughs> <laughs> 49ers and Chiefs. I mean, look, here's the reality. I think it's going to be a widely watched. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's going to be the most watched Super Bowl in its 58-year history. I could totally say that. Because of Taylor Swift. Sure. Only because, now we're not saying just because of Taylor Swift, but you're adding so many people, I feel like. A whole other element. You're adding another group of viewers. Right. You're adding young people. Not just girls, right? Fans. Right. It's a whole nother group. Girls, gays. <laughs> I see you got a full restart going oh, on. Oh, yeah. There, huh? uh, hello. Look at this. The kiss. The kiss scene around the world. And you know what? Listen, do you know Jordan, our reporter Jordan in the morning was so cute. She's just like, I just don't understand why people like dislike this. She goes, I just love love. I do too. So cute. Here's the thing. And I can tell you exactly what it is. It is the fact that she's a woman. Yeah. And I'm going, this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. Oh, 100%. 100%. Because who's he, Ed? The supportive boyfriend Correct. when she's on stage. Right. And who's she when he's playing? A distraction. But you know what? I hate that. And if, if you're right, if the roles were reversed. That's everybody, everybody was like, what a supportive boyfriend. Right. He went to, you know, wherever he flew to go see her concert. But he's such a supportive guy. He, in a season, he managed to find time to go. And now she's there. She's not choosing with the cameras on her. Like, she's a distraction. Right. Total distraction. Distraction for the team. Total double standard. Distraction for it. Um, and I, I, I just, I really, I, I'm with you, Kareen. Oh, now, can we talk about that? I'm excited for Usher. I am too. I thought he was a good choice. That's an interest. Usher? He's got a lot of good songs. I can't wait. They span a lot of time too. God, he had some really good songs when we I, were I'm younger. just thinking about Let It Burn. What's the one where he had this? Remember? He had the, like, he was just kind of oh, like a, like yeah, a clown I know or something. About. I can't think of the song. He had the, like, circle and, like, he had the face makeup on. What is your favorite Usher song? Oh, my God. I don't even know. These are my confessions. Oh just when I thought I said God. all I could say, my chick on the side said she, she got, got one on the way. Okay, wait. I want to think about, like, his older songs, though. Oh, <laughs> Which so one? I just you make me want to leave the one I'm with, start a new relationship with you. This Maybe is what you do. Maybe that was probably the one with the makeup, I yeah. think, right? Think I'm out of ring and all that. Uh, 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 My boo. Uh, 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 you got boo. it bad. You, you got, got it. You got it bad. Burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. That whole album, that Confessions. Confessions part two. Yeah. Not just one. That whole album is so good. Man, I'm thrown and I don't know what to do. Guess I got to keep part two of my confession. Caught up. So, I'm so yeah. caught Yeah, up. you make me want to. I think that's what I was thinking of where he's got that makeup on. Yeah, oh my gosh. 
All right. But the feeling ain't so the Caitlin same. So Caitlin said she was excited. And then somebody else said, okay, uh, Peter said, yeah, because Reba is doing the uh, yeah. national anthem. I'm excited and for that. Caitlin said she's really excited to hear Reba because she loves her. Um, yeah, I'm only going to watch it. My mom wants to know, do you think Taylor is going to be there? I do, mom. She can finish her concert in Japan, hop on her flight, and then get to the Super Bowl. Do, did the Daily Mail do the timeline? They did. What did they say? Because I was wondering, because that's a long flight. Yeah, except for she can like sleep on the plane probably. Like yeah. she probably has a plane that you can actually sleep on, unlike when you and I fly. <laughs> okay, wait. So funny story. Speaking of flying, you know how the last time you and I were in New York? Oh, see, I agree. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. the Just last pulling time up some of the comments while you- You yeah, and I were in New York together. Uh -huh. Remember I like walked in. Sorry. Paul was really mad. He wanted Jamba Juice yeah, yeah, and a yeah. snack. Yeah. And so I totally couldn't have it. Right. <laughs> so- we were hours early. We spent the majority of the day in the airport, and that drives me nuts. But what? wait, Russ made you get there early? Yes. Oh. And there was some protest. I, uh -huh. So they tell you to get there early, but I mean, we were there way early. Our flight didn't leave until about four o'clock. What time did you get there? Probably about 1 30. Okay, that's a little early. I would want to be there by like two, though. You're in New York City, you never know what it's going to be like. Oh I want to walk on the plane. That's my husband's the same way, and I cannot take it. I get to the gate, and I'm nervous. <laughs> like, I need to be sitting there, watching the gate, reading my book. Like, Well, and I was trying to read my book, too, but then they had music on, and I was, like, the music was blasting. So I'm like, oh, these are really good songs. Okay, so when we were flying out, was it in Buffalo? No, I think it was our maybe our second flight. Well, in Buffalo, we, like, I was like, we should have been here early. We should have got here. We should have got here. Okay, fine. We get, we get on. And I hit, and then every time when that flight takes off, there's just like a little bit of me that's like, oh. what'd you forget? No, because I'm like, again, he wins because he got the, you know, whatever. everything's fine. Well, so then we landed. I think our layover was in, oh, uh, Dallas on the way down there. And so at one point he decided he wanted, I don't know, like a breakfast sandwich or something. And I am waiting to board the second plane. Group one, group two, group. And I'm watching. I'm like, where's Paul? Where's Paul? He's down getting a breakfast yeah. sandwich. I'm texting him. Get this flight's about to leave. This flight's about to leave. I'm group six. For some reason, he was group nine every time. <laughs> I booked our tickets again. I don't know why. But um, yeah, he, I mean, we were the last people to get on the plane. And then like one person came running in and Paul's like, see, we weren't the last. See, exactly. I'm like, this you still have a seat. You're checked in. Are you an early to the airport? Paging Paul Gigengack. You have two minutes before the <laughs> door closes. Before your wife leaves you here. <laughs> like, I was like, are you kidding me? We're even in the airport and you're late. Barbara. Barbara. So funny. She says early relief stress. I agree. Michael says she, the Orlando airport can be tough. Oh, the Orlando airport is the I worst. Have a thousand kids. Oh my God. They're everywhere. And there's so many backpacks. different levels. It's it's a little confusing. I got to say that. Um, but Buffalo, isn't it so nice to have an airport like Buffalo where it's just super easy you yeah. can breeze through security you got tsa pre-check i love it do you have pre-check no which is why we get there early uh ed are you wired this morning did you have some good coffee or did you get some good news uh, uh no and no i mean i didn't think i was wired i'm kind of tired to be oh paul was cute she said thanks for singing ed i'm really not familiar with usher song she do you need to hear more of them <laughs> we're happy to do a rendition um okay how about this one when you go to a restaurant, speaking of restaurants, um, do you check in on the price, the menu, or what's one thing that's a real deal breaker for you? Um, is it is it one thing in particular, or is it several things? I'm I'm usually looking for the menu if I'm going. Like I want to try it because there's something I want to try there because the menu looks good. I usually. And yeah, I guess you're right. The menu is mm -hmm. really what it is. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'm, I don't really look at menus before I go to the restaurant, to be honest. Oh, I always do. I'm, I'm just kind of like, oh, this, everyone's going there. It must be good. Or I want to try this because it's new. Uh, let's see what it's like. And what turns you away from a restaurant? Let's say you go there one time. What is going to make you not go back? The service. The service. A hundred percent. There was food too, I feel like. Yeah. Okay, so yes, absolutely. If you don't have a good meal. Yeah, I mean, if the food's not good and yeah. the service sucks, then I'm definitely not coming back. Um, so here's, there was this one restaurant on Main Street in Williamsville. Not going to say what it is, but the restaurant was terrible. It was bad. The service was bad, and I don't think that they were having a bad day. I think that it was just something had gone wrong because the reviews said the exact same thing that we had suffered. Uh-huh. And 
not going back. Okay. Well, don't tell us what it is. <laughs> you gave us a pretty specific location, though. So well, I mean, it could be anything. Well, one of 20. <laughs> uh, Caitlin says, same. Now that she's traveled a little, she likes to look for different stuff. She found a restaurant with good New Orleans stuff ooh. here in Buffalo. Oh, Did ooh. you guys talk about the new, uh, the James Beard list that came out? Uh, I, I wasn't here when it came the out. The local restaurants. John, Wax did White. you guys talk about that on Second Cup? The James Beard restaurants, the list that came out? You did. You talked about it. Waxlight so, getting a big review. Waxlight and then Southern Junction. Southern Junction. Have you been there? I haven't. Delicious. Someone posted a picture, though, and it looked so good. So we took out a couple of weeks ago from mm -hmm. Southern Junction. Oh, yeah, we used yeah. to go when it was on Chandler. Uh, and, okay. you know, it was all takeout. You couldn't sit down. But we've had a catered. Oh, yeah. From... Wait a minute. That one was on Chandler in yeah. the same place as Sweet Whisk? Correct. Oh, with the big, and they would do the barbecue yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize it was the same place. They just moved. They moved to. Uh, yeah, but I used to see it all the time, and I never put two together. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Waxlight, another one of my favorite restaurants. Uh, but Southern Junction. I like that. The figure says if you can't make a rare steak, he is not going. To <laughs> yeah, agrees. That's perfect. <laughs> Janine likes menu, but she needs a good ambiance. What about cleanliness? Anybody check about cleanliness? Because I think if you went and you noticed that didn't exist, you probably wouldn't go back. Like, what about the bathroom? The bathroom is a telltale sign for me. Yeah. If the bathroom in a restaurant is gross, then I'm assuming your kitchen is also. Do you know what I mean? I guess so, yeah. I think that a well kept bathroom is a real sign of what the restaurant values. Does that make sense? Like yeah. if there's toilet paper all over the floor or if there's you like- know what, You know what is tough, like a bar bathroom? Oh, gross. Because like- Everyone's peeing all over the place. Huh, okay, well, there you go. Well, I mean, call spade a spade, right? Like I just always feel like drunk. at the end of the night, like those kind of go by the wayside. Yeah. Like, you gotta get out of here. Um, but then- you know, or if there's like good soap and candles and paper towels in the mm -hmm. bathroom, mm -hmm. that stuff is what I'm really into. Mm -hmm. um, I like a good bathroom experience. <laughs> <laughs> Super weird. But okay. No, you yeah. know what I mean? No, like, yeah. go to Roost, for instance. Roost has a great bathroom. Yeah. Um, ooh, Anizio has a great bathroom. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. They have like a little private little bathroom. Love like, that. It's almost like a little house bathroom. Yeah. Because it kind of is like a little house. Well, so I get really uncomfortable in the bathroom with other people there. So I need my own space. Okay. Do you know what I mean? We'll try to make sure that you get it. <laughs> so I like when it's like single bathrooms. Yeah. Um, Grace says yes, and look for big boxes outside the restaurants. Why? What's the big box situation, Grace? No. Now, Marguerite was replying to Jeff saying, come to Batavia. She ordered a medium last time, and it was mooing. <laughs> <laughs> ordered a medium while this weekend was still mooing. That's so funny. I like a rare steak. Medium rare medium is for rare me. Steak, yeah. yeah, I don't like them rare. I don't like, like when it's like still got some juice in it, but I don't love when it's mooing. Your mom says enough, enough of the bathroom. Well, talk. but you know what I'm talking about though, right? I mean. Oh, she said bait boxes. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no True. kidding. Although, you know what? In a place like Buffalo. You need them. You need them. There's nothing you can do. A there lot are just of the rats time. everywhere in Buffalo. Yeah, there really are. Um, I used to live across the street from uh, the place, one of my favorite restaurants also. But, yeah. you know, like any restaurant you go to, you know, is going to attract that kind of. Yeah. And dumpsters, yeah. that kind of stuff just does. So you just, I mean, you see them. I think it's just, yeah. honestly, what it shows is that the restaurant is taking Action? precautions. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question. Now, if you see them inside, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a question that we had earlier. When you go to a restaurant, you know, you get your fork and your knife and it's wrapped in your napkin. Mm -hmm. So I was asking this, when you put your napkin on your lap, what do you do? Do you get another napkin to put your fork and knife on? Or do you put your fork and knife on the, um, plate. the, the plate? Do you put your fork and knife on the table? I had a situation one time I didn't have a plate yet. So, and I had the fork and knife and I was like, I don't think I'm really going to use a knife. So I balanced the fork on the knife. I would do the same thing. Yeah. Honestly, I hate when they touch the table. Yeah. Because you don't know if the table's been clean. You don't know who's been touching it. You know, and the table's usually clean with, like, the washcloth. Yeah, yeah. But again, like, you know, we're probably exposed to worse things. I, you know, I hear you, though. You want it to be nice and clean. What about, like, cups? Do you drink out of the glass or do you ask for a straw? 
I think either. I probably prefer a straw if it was available. Like if you're asking, uh, Connie, we asked for paper napkins and put silverware on that. Yeah. Totally fair. Like I don't mind getting a water glass, but the first thing I'm always doing when I get a water glass is looking uh, for lip marks yeah. on the rim. Mm -hmm. That is so gross. Yeah. Like, Do you know what yeah, I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, I will say I've had a glass. Have you had a glass one time like that has like some of this lipstick they make these days? Like, I don't know what is in this stuff. <laughs> and like, I, I personally don't like that kind of lipstick. The like non, what do they call it? The constant, you don't know. It's like the non, like doesn't transfer, right? Okay. Like that's the like goal of it. But it does not come off. <laughs> like, I don't want to wake up in the morning with the lipsticks on my face. Yeah. Like, I don't want to wash my face and it's still there. I get that. It's too much. And so I could see if the waiter waitress wasn't looking, just stuck the glass in the dishwasher or whoever, you know, some of that stuff doesn't come off. It needs a good scrub. Then you're really, yeah, that is kind of gross. Yeah. You, you like, you had to look at that before. You well, so up. like even plastic cups, give me a straw all the way. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Non foot, non smudge lipstick. Yeah. That's what it, it is. is. It's like, and you know what? I don't like the waterproof. And he's, it just doesn't come off. I know you use makeup remover too, but it's just too much for me. Not into it. Yeah. Uh, what about this? How about going to a job interview? Oh my God, this story was so funny. With your parents. It turns out one in five employers have said that they have just interviewed a college grad and they brought their parents along their, for the interview. Their mom or dad went with them. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, I, I would... I would rather die. And it's not like they're going into the interview with them. They're like, okay, good luck, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not because I don't love my parents. My mom, obviously, here with us, she's a huge supporter. And, and I'm genuinely grateful for that. But, yeah. like, at some point, you need to be a professional and show that you're mature enough to, like, be responsible. Now, I said this did make me remember that when I – was interviewing for my very first job. It was in Syracuse and I know I hadn't been feeling well. And so my dad was like, well, I'll drive you to Syracuse. Very so nice. he <laughs> drove me and just dropped me off. And then I went in for the interview and then I just left at the end and he was just kind of hanging out there. That was kind of nice because honestly you had somebody to talk to because for two and a half hours, you know me, I'd be like swirling. <laughs> Think about by the time I got there, I'd be sweating. <laughs> I, you but know, it's kind of nice. It's nice to have that person who's supporting you yeah. Wait for you in the car. Yeah, we, so we were able to decompress after too. And I told that, I remember like being like, can we stop and get pizza? Cause I'm starving. I didn't eat anything. I was all <laughs> nervous, but yeah, he didn't come in with me, but it was nice to have a, it was nice to have a drive. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but to go in the interview with you, what do you think that employer yeah. says? Like Cheryl says, are you kidding? That's crazy. Right. Barbara said, are you kidding? Lori goes, I thought I heard it all. No kidding. No joke. This is one of those moments where, Margaret, talk about helicopter parenting. Yeah. Uh, Lori says you got to cut the cord. It, eventually, it becomes time to let your children go out and spread their wings. Terry says it's ridiculous if she was doing the interviews, that person would not be chosen if their parents came along. Well, and what does that say about you as a candidate, too? Do you know what I mean? Like, what the fact that you are, are genuinely immature. I would be mortified if my parents even agreed to come to an interview. Thank you. And what does it say about the parent? Helicopter parents, yeah, that's what they were saying. Your mom says, never, ever, ever. Right, no. Because she never knows what's coming out of your mouth, so she does not want to associate. <laughs> <laughs> She's the same, though, so <laughs> birds of a feather, you know exactly where it's coming from. Howard says he would ask the interviewee to ask them to leave. Yeah. That's kind of fair. Like, Thank you so much for coming. It's so nice to meet yeah. you. Get the hell out no, of listen, here. Let's say somebody had a fill-in-the-blank story, like, Although, like, just leave your parents in the car, I guess would be, like, the way to do this, right? Again, if somebody had, if you needed a ride or something like that, hey, my car broke down, <laughs> don't bring them in. Right, leave this them outside. This is my dad. He's just going to sit out here for a minute because I, um, whatever. What if the interviewer takes you to lunch or something? What are your dad's like, can I go to? Right. Oh, what's on the menu? Oh, Where is it clean going? there? Where are you going? <laughs> do they have good service? Gosh, that would be so embarrassing for me. I don't know what I would do. I'm trying to see what. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Susan says, sometimes. Oh, oh, she's talking about the restaurants, going to Denny's to mm -hmm. eat. Lori said she would just be really embarrassed. Oh, yeah. And Jeanette says, it's uh, driving you there is nice for the moral support. And it was. Um, Barbara says, uh, do you know how clean your silverware is? Oh, I'm Bet sure the it's table's disgusting. Cleaner. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> gross. Yuck. Oh, uh, listen, I apologize. My computer 
chose the uh, worst possible time to restart and update. So I apologize for not being. It's so as funny because I told him this. Okay, if you're watching us on stream right now, we have to go. But uh, if you're with us on Facebook, I had told him this morning. I was like, I know we keep putting off this like thing because you're always working, right? And it wants to update, and you're like, I don't have 20 minutes to update right now. So I said to him, I go, be careful if this thing just like I tried to dismiss it, but it just updated, and then like it was putting me through that this morning. And he's like, Oh yeah, mine hasn't done it. Yet. Surprise! <laughs> it just waits till the best time, doesn't it? Gotta love it. All right. Listen, we gotta get the show on the road. Thank you so much for being with us on this Monday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great day.